India is the world's largest user of groundwater. A whopping 250 cubic kilometers of groundwater are withdrawn every year. That's twice the amount withdrawn every year in China, where agricultural water productivity is twice that of India. 53% of India's irrigated agriculture uses groundwater. Groundwater use by the sector grew tenfolds between 1969 and 2010. More than 100 out of India's 640 districts are officially groundwater stressed. This extreme and increasing groundwater scarcity drives the need to boost water productivity in agriculture. This is the backdrop against which the Centre for Environment Concern in Hyderabad developed SWAR, a measured irrigation system that applies precise amounts of water at the root zone of plants. Field tests with various kinds of crops in India's drought-prone Andhra Pradesh state have shown that SWAR can cut down water use to a third. Here is a clip from a video developed by the Centre for Environment Concern, outlining the SWAR system and how it differs from above-ground drip irrigation systems. SWAR transforms water use in agriculture and measured moisture is ideal ecosystem to foster soil microbes to improve soil health and its capacity to hold water and in wider capillary spread of moisture to serve growing roots. How SWAR differs from DRIP? Water quantum released on the surface. Measured moisture at plant root zone. Measuring moisture to plan irrigation schedule and quantum based on seasons, species, and soil type and drastically reduce plant water need. Variation in moisture spread of drip and swar. Key features of swar. No weed growth. Swar leads to capillary moisture spread and strong plant roots. Swar approach is moisture at root zone and microbes for the soil to maximize plant growth and yield. A key part of the SWAR system is facilitating the growth of microorganisms in the soil, which in turn boost plant growth and help maximize the spread of moisture. To stimulate microbial growth, microbial inoculants are used. These inoculants are organic soil amendments, which can be prepared right at the farm. Okay, this is how you make microbe inoculants. You take the local soil, add some red soil, so that means bring the opposite color soil to it and add farmyard manure. Farmyard manure in India is basically cow dung. Mm -hmm. It should be at least cured for three to four months. It should be fresh cow dung. So you put it and then you use, you go for what is called as jivamritam. Jivamritam in Indian tradition is the mixing of cow's urine with groundnut, uh, with uh, jaggery. Mm -hmm. So that's what we put on that. Yeah. Because uh, microorganisms like sweetie, mm. right? And uh, so then that's that's how the jivamritam is applied here. Yeah. And then you sh you put layer after layer like that. Yeah. And that's how the then we add to it after ten days. We add uh, 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 protein, yeah. which comes in the form of groundnut cake powder or any any mm. other yeah. cake powder, along with jiva, along with uh, jaggery. Yeah. Right. And this is how we put it on the bed. Mm. And then you water it. Okay. Okay. You keep watering it, not just moist it, not so much yeah. water. It. Then we put. This is called the navdanya, which is the nine uh, types of seeds in the plant kingdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So you spread it like this, on that. Yeah. And yeah. then you mulch it. Yeah. And then you sort of sprinkle it with water. After twenty-seven days since you started, yeah. you will find it grow like this. This is very very rich in microorganisms as well as mycorrhizae. Okay. This you apply at the bed of my system, swar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. So there is soil. Yeah. The soils are of opposite types. Yeah. Those which have diversity in microorganisms. Yeah. What do we mean by micro? Bacteria, mm -hmm. fungi, nematodes, everything. Yeah. There are some which are good, there are some which may not be good, but doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You can't distinguish which is there. Right? Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but the soils would have. So you put them on, so you mm -hmm. have a base. You add some banyan tree, mm -hmm. soil yeah. under a banyan tree, because that has the largest biodiversity of yeah. microorganisms. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. add that. So th therefore you have one stage. Second, you're fostering microorganisms. Yeah. So you have to foster them and also from the soils, new ones will come up. 
Yeah. I'll give you one instance. Everybody talks about vermicomposting. Yeah. You know, vermicompost is is using the earthworms. Yeah. But it is good. But do you know what is that? Hmm. Those earthworms are not the best. Why? No. Those earthworms, which are hybrids, are scavenging at the top. Yeah. They move horizontally. What we need are those which plow and create aeration in the soil, mm. yeah. which means moving vertically. That is what this does. So it creates a much much richer ecosystem for microorganisms. So you have created an ecosystem of microorganisms. Now to that add mycorrhizae. Yeah. Mycorrhizae is the root health. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Because remember, we are all trying to say if the roots are healthy, the rest is going to be history. Yeah. So the mycorrhizae will help that. Mm-hmm. The roots become strong and you have created an ecosystem of certain amount of microbes being available and aided and abetted by a moisture regime that that fosters microorganisms.